This is Simple Living with Theata. I'm learning how to build my dream home and homestead from scratch with very little experience. And this week starts the framing series. Today is framing day. And I'm super excited because yesterday I picked up my house plans on waterproof material and I'm excited to get started with framing. I think I'm gonna start with this wall here and we'll see where we go from there. <laughs> like, I literally can't even believe this. First things first is I need to cut all of my lumber to the correct size. All of our exterior walls are framed in two by sixes. This is so we have enough insulation for our cold winter days and enough strength for our snow loads. And all of my two by six lumber was sent in 16 foot lengths. So it's time to cut them down to the proper stud size. Here goes cut number one for our entire house. The studs are cut, time to cut the base plate and the top plate. The coat in our area requires that all exterior wall base plates on concrete slabs must be pressure treated. This is because of the moisture and it also deters pests. Next up, I'm gonna pre-drill all of the holes for the anchor bolts in my base plate. That way I don't have to do it later when we go to stand up the wall. Unfortunately, on concrete day, I didn't have time to make sure they were exactly the same distance away from the outside of the concrete. So it's a bit wonky and I'm measuring each one. This is huge. <laughs> okay, there we go. It's time to mark out where all of these studs are gonna go. Oh my gosh, this is a lot more complicated than a shed. It took me like an hour to lay this out. I cannot believe how slow today went. I will see you tomorrow. Good morning. So I spent the morning getting some extra base plates in. That way it's done and easy to start off the next wall. And I spent some time last night just doing a bunch of math so that today can be a lot more seamless and so I'm not just like standing there and staring for like what feels like hours on end. All right, it's time to get cutting again. Which brings us to today's sponsor, Blue Eddy. And if you didn't know, my brand deals help me afford a living and also brings you free content to watch. So as I build my first wall, I'm gonna show you how I use my AC300 power station and B300 battery banks with some heavy duty tools. Time to get out my new battery bank. My goal with having extra battery banks is to be able to use my power stations in emergency agencies like power outages but it's also great for the build because it provides me with double the amount of watt hours that I can use. Each battery provides me with 3,072 watt hours, which brings me up to 6,144 watt hours with the two batteries. And you can go up to four batteries with the AC300, which brings you up to 12,288 watt hours. Okay, time to get my AC on my DeWalt battery charged, my miter saw plugged in. What I love about the AC300 is that it has six 20 amp outlets and one 30 amp outlet to be able to power multiple devices at once. The Blue Eddy seems to be doing really well. It's pulling about 1800 watts with the miter saw and the AC300 has a 3000 watt surge, which is perfect for most miter saws. All right, you guys, it is time to frame my first wall. Next up, I'm putting the air compressor on the Blue Eddy. It's always worked great and had no issues, both on the AC300, which I have here, and the AC200. There's a few things I'm just gonna pre-build before I put them into place to get nailed in, which are these things. I don't know the technical term, but there's gonna be a wall butt up against here and here. And then I'm also going to frame out the headers. So I built this header with two by three spacing in between so that I can throw in some spray foam insulation and have it insulated. And I've been doing a lot of cutting and a lot of nailing today. And my Blue Eddy batteries have only gone down 6%, 
which is awesome. By using the AC300 and B300, you can power a 1000 watt microwave for 2.6 hours, a 700 watt refrigerator for 3.7 hours, and a 500 watt power washer for 5.2 hours. And you can recharge the power station by using the AC input in one and a half hours. I'm realizing I did my spacing the wrong way, so I'm gonna have to pull this apart. At least I can show you how the Sawzall works with the Blue Eddy. What I love is that when I'm using these power tools, the Blue Eddy holds strong. So if you're looking for a quiet, cost-effective, and gas-free power solution, look no further. Check out Blue Eddy linked in my description, and thank you so much to Blue Eddy for sponsoring this week's video. Now let's get back to it. Let's try that again. There we go. All of the bigger pieces are built now and it's time to start nailing the wall together. I'm going to start with the base plate because then I can shoot all of the galvanized nails in and not have to worry about it until the next wall. Using my chainsaw wedges is like literally the best thing for framing. I can shim my studs up or shim the baseboard up and get it into the right place so that my hand doesn't get in the way when I go to shoot the nail. Mistakes are how we learn. Mistakes are how we learn. Okay, so when I was doing my measurements for the jack stud, I forgot to account for the base plate, which means my jack studs are an inch and a half too tall, and I already have them nailed in, and I'm not taking it all apart. So what I'm gonna do is prop up this end and cut it. All right, it's fixed and I won't be making that mistake again. That just destroyed my back when I was jacking up the wall. The top of the window studs are off by like a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna have to cut them, but I do have to go pick up my daughter from school. So it's a new day and I spent the last like hour and a half cutting wood for my next wall and fixing the little pieces that have to go above the header here. So I'm going to nail that together and then my next wall is almost identical to this wall but it's just flipped. So I'm going to drill the anchor bolt holes through the base plate and then mark the next wall's base plate to match this wall but flipped. Okay time to build the wall partitions and the header for this next wall. The reason why I'm building these wall partitions, I don't know what they're actually called, I'm just calling them wall partitions, is because an interior wall is going right up against where that two by four is. And when I first started this, I was like, well, why not just put the two by four in? Why do you need all this extra wood? But when you go to put the drywall in, you need a place to screw in the drywall. So that's why you need two by six, two by four, two by six. So all of our exterior walls are two by sixes because we live in Canada and it's better for insulation and it's better for snow loads. And then most of the interior walls are two by fours other than the walls that are load bearing, which are also two by sixes. All right, the header and the wall partitions are nailed together. And now it's time to lay out and nail the wall. And it's always important to remember when you're laying out your wall that the crown of the wood faces up. So the crown of the wood is like the natural bow that happens in wood. And so the hump of the wood faces up. That way when you're framing the wall, it doesn't rock like this. And that way in the interior of your home, your walls are consistent. Whenever I have a spot that's like bowed out and the stud isn't touching the top plate, I take a screw and I screw it in because screws are great at that. And then I nail it and then remove the screw after.
there we go that's two walls framed they still need to be sheeted and there's 10 more walls to go some are gonna be easier walls to frame and some are gonna require a lot of math and a lot of pre-planning good morning it is now monday morning my videos are a bit wonky right now i'm going from like later half of the week to early half of the week this weekend, my husband, daughter, and I came by. My daughter had a friend over. I got all of the gardening done, which I desperately needed to do. And I wrote a list for my husband of all the wood that I wanted to cut for the next two walls. So he got that done for me. Now it's time to frame the third wall. It is also very similar to the first two walls. Same window size, just a little bit different of a layout. I wouldn't normally work on a day that's raining, but I have only so many days before our wall lifting party. Our wall lifting party is this Saturday. I have five working days to get everything else framed so we can lift all the exterior walls in one day. Luckily, I packed my farmer's market tent. Farmer's market tent, work tent, I don't know. <laughs> I have this wall's base plate in and now I have to do this wall's base plate so that it's done because once this side's wall is framed, it's gonna be too hard to pre-drill the holes for the anchor bolts on the other side. This requires a lot of pre-planning. You would think you'd be able to just come and like nail some walls together, but you know, you gotta pre-plan. You gotta think about it first. Just like that, the third wall is done. Well, sort of done. <laughs> Still have to sheet it and put the house wrap on, and then it'll be ready to lift up for the wall raising party. Having like a major issue where I can't square this up on my own, and I feel like the water is making it worse because it's creating like a little bit of a suction to the ground. But this isn't good because I need to be able to square it to put the sheeting on. I figured it out. I just had to make sure that the diagonal that I needed to shorten, one of the corners was touching something strong so that I could hammer it and shorten that side, if that makes sense. I officially got it square. one sheet of OSB on one wall. I really felt like at this point I would have at least all three of these walls sheeted. It's been a bit of a difficult day with the rain. But next week I'm gonna sheet the rest of these, build the rest of the walls, and get ready for the wall raising party. Thank you so much for watching this week's video and if you haven't yet the best way to support my channel is to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much and with that I will see you next week. Only